this is Tim Pierce. Uh, the video you're about to see is basically a bunch of little pieces of film at a live session uh, down at East West Studios in Hollywood. Been there hundreds of times with different projects. Historic studio, Frank Sinatra, The Beach Boys, Tom Petty, The Chili Peppers, hundreds of others. And some really nice people from Brazil. So you're gonna just see kind of some of the process. Click the link below if you wanna check out the masterclass. We're up to almost a thousand videos and close to 100 hours of content. So I'm here at East West with some great people from Brazil, the drummer from Tears for Fears, bass player from John Mayer's band, guys I know, uh, and this room is just the greatest. Check it out. I remember the first time I recorded in this room, it was in about 1980, and Van Halen was rehearsing across the alley for their second tour, I think, and it was amazing. I would do, we would do our takes, and I would walk out into the alley, and I would hear Eddie Van Halen just going crazy. The place was called SIR and it was one of the primary rehearsal spaces in Hollywood at that time. And this place was called United Western. Very, very uh, historic studio, Frank Sinatra, the Beach Boys. East West Software Company is kind of a patron for this place. They keep it in the original condition and they kind of keep it keep it open so that uh, they don't tear it down and build a big giant steel high-rise hotel here. <laughs> So here's this chart. So the intro is E, and then we have F sharp 11, and then A at 9. So that's a little simpler than it sounds. And I'll show you the part I play. So you see it's based on those familiar chords, but what I was asked to do was something kind of inside and dark and funky. So that's what I did, muting over here and just doing smaller versions of the chords. Okay, so for the bridge of this song, let me show you those chords. And they wanted me to, to kind of open it up there and I, I kind of kept it open for the rest of the song. So I'll show you the part there. Let's take a look at the setup today. So here we have my divided by 13 head. I have the Kemper there on standby, although we haven't used it. I just brought, brought it as insurance in case they wanted something in stereo and something maybe super heavy or super direct sounding. The pedal board as it exists right now, always changing. I'm really enjoying using the delays on these even tides. Um, love the way they sound. Brought the nailer just in case they want an extra sound. You never know. I mean, I, I, it's, I like to have backup heads and backup guitars when I show up places because you never know if people might want something different than you're giving them. But so far, so good. We, did, we cut four songs yesterday, and I just stayed plugged into this head. It was fine. These days, I don't bring that much. And these days, you don't really need that much. Everything I've done has been through the Divided by 13. The Kemper's there just in case. Sean brought me over this Supro from his studio across the street so that I could just kind of hear sound in the room. I want that amp. <laughs> and it's just pedals. I used the compressor for one sound today and then my delays. I don't have that many guitars. I just have my old Anderson, my new old 62 335, and then this Tuttle with P90s, which really sounds amazing. Those are the only three guitars I have, and that's all I need. The 80s and 90s, I used to bring a cartridge truck full of gear, 40 or 50 guitars, tons of amps, effects, racks, cabinets, and now it's just whatever I put in my car. Programming this pedal board quite a bit for different scene changes, that's working out nicely. I can group whatever, pe whatever pedals I want, do a preset, and just press a button, and different groups of pedals uh, come on automatically, so it's great for sonic changes. Look at the keyboard setup, really compact and nice. He's got some good stuff here. And then that's the ISO box for the bass amp. There's Sean Hurley's setup with all these vintage basses, which is great. One set of drums in the room, which we haven't used yet, because all the drum tracks have been here. There's two sets of drums, 
and they're gonna be overdubbing on that set I think but the actual drum room is in here which is pretty awesome and it sounds great so two kits now let me travel back into the back here and open this door and here I am ignoring the rules because voila, there is where my cabinet is with a Royer and a 57 as is standard. And they actually tried to mitigate some of the, it's actually so loud even in this room that I had to, actually had to turn it down yesterday because uh, there's a client in that studio right there. There's like five studios here and I was too loud for my neighbor. So extra cables, maintenance, stuff like that. And then more studios, east, west, very pretty place. Six bathrooms, super high ceilings, and then the lounge, nice kitchen, multiple refrigerators, each studio has its own fridge. Everything was right when you were the Pro 2 stuff. Man, that was beautiful. We love you. Okay, just ideas. Great. You, you can go home for the rest of the day. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 want, I want just to ask one yeah. thing for you. Yeah. I like idea for the chorus, so. All right. And then, does it repeat? Something like that. Okay. Here, the... here I go. So they sang me that really cool melody, and I love getting ideas from everybody. Um, I love all the ideas you want. When you're collaborating in the studio, you want all the ideas. <laughs> At least I do, anyway. Um, so the chords, G, E minor, B minor, and C, uh, I actually did the capo for a reason, because I wanted to get all these nice open strings. And when I play lines, I like to thicken up the sound. With just a little bit of gain from a pedal or the amp or whatever. I had this guitar made in the early 90s, and maybe the late 80s, and my desire was to have, there were so many custom fancy finishes, I wanted to have no finish. And I thought it might sound better if it just had a minimal finish. Even though a Floyd Rose does change the, the tone of a Strat, this one is just still great for really gentle vibrato. So let me show you this melody. They gave me the beginning of it, and then I had to come up with the second half of it, and I'll show you how I did that. Here we go. See, I came up with the answers. They gave me the beginning and the entry to it, and they just relied on me to adapt it to the chord changes and make a part out of it, which ended up being some different different melodies. So for this song, I got to do something really kind of dreamy. I picked up my old Anderson because of the Floyd Rose. It stays perfectly in tune when I wiggle. And so it's like, you know, Nice delays on the even tide, and I even pushed a little bit with the uh, ODR1. So we got the chorus, G to E minor to B minor to C. And there was a part I ended up with that they liked, which was... a little bit of wiggle on the end of each phrase makes it float nicely. And there was a, a, a melody that they asked for, which was... And 
Okay, and the bridge has really nice chords. A minor seven. The D seven. And then kind of G major seven, G major nine over B. C at nine. A minor seven again, backstroke. D seven. This again. A minor seven. And a rest on the F at nine. That was very dramatic and cool. It's like tension. We're ruining your video? Well, you just said made the video. Uh, <laughs> what are you having for lunch, Timmy? Whatever you tell me to have. Where are you guys ordering from? Everybody. I think so, yep. We're cool over here. Uh, do I see three vintage Fender bases here? You do. Wow. We have, let me put them up correctly. Oh. Yeah. 61, 69, 66. Gorgeous. We need to get a picture before the day is done. There have been many days spent and no pictures taken. Yeah, it's it's really hard when you're playing to just to not do anything but play. Yeah, I've noticed. Uh, I know. I feel right now it's going to like a sweeter, sweeter vibe, and we, we need it to be more. Uh... Yeah, nasty. More nasty! More. Okay, great. So in this case, I had played something that was too pretty for their taste. They asked for nasty. I actually don't remember how I solved this, but I might have done something like, okay, turn up the gain and go. Or perhaps. Or maybe... <clears throat> so it's just a matter of turning up the gain and doing something a little simpler or more, you know, like rock or... Or like the edge. So this one hit kind of a simple drone throughout, but on the second verse, I did a percolating part. Chords. I dried it up and I went. So that was A, E7, F, C. So that was kind of my way of keeping something consistent through it.